again. It's Willie D. You know, I was looking at all these um, drills that are basically been given to me. I mean, just look at them all, one after the other. None of them work. All the batteries are dead. And so people are giving them away. So I wanted to show and have a go at um, putting one of these drills to main power. So removing the batteries and putting it into main power and help anybody else that wants to do this. So, so here's a um, 12 volt drill, Craftsman. Battery's not working. So we're going to convert this into a 12 volt DC from the mains. So we just pop out the battery first. And we get a screwdriver and unscrew, which is very convenient. Four screws in the top here. So now you've got the four screws out with your star screwdriver. There are some of them are a little different, but this is a star screwdriver. And there you have it, there's your insides. You have to get these batteries out. Just take a little bit of them forcing, not too much, so just keep going around the corners till it comes. They're just wedged in there. Oh, there we go. And now you have a casing that's empty, and you have your four screwdriver, and you have this one up here. It's clipped in somehow. You just press down and try to get this out. This one, there we go, it's coming. And there you have it. There's the top area, a blank, which is where your power cable is going to go into and come out of. Real light now, all the weight's taken out. Put those out of the way. You can still see this. Now we have our, um, basically our wires and everything here and our clips. We don't really need that at all. You can just put that aside, right? And you can actually solder right in there. If you're not putting batteries back in, you can solder right in here on these two flat pins and have wire coming out. Now I have another drill already done and I'll just show you. I have no intention of putting this back in or a battery back into this um, drill. So what I'm going to do is chop off basically the top of this unit here so the wires can come straight down through. There you go, that's the quick way of doing it. Um, there is, you can actually use a hacksaw here and you know, it'll cut this plastic quite easy, as you can see. So you can cut the top off with the hacksaw if you don't have a Dremel. You just file this a little bit now, clean it up, and away you go. See that goes in there, right? So now you're ready to put your cables in and this will come down on top afterwards like this. See, there you go. You have your cable coming straight out, straight down and straight into the box. Pretty simple. Just to make sure the contacts take, I'm uh, fighting a little bit inside here. Make sure the solder takes, right? Sometimes they're coated, but most of these kinds are pretty easy to solder. There we go. Put a little bit of flux on the end of your wires. Just, uh, there we go, just dip them in the flux a little bit so that they have flux. There's flux on those. I'll put that out of the way a minute. And then you want to take a little screwdriver and take a little bit of flux and put it in here on these contacts in this inside the drill here, the two silver contacts. There we go. Now you get your solder, which is right here. I'll bring this up a bit so 
sticking out there. My soldering gun, heat it up, and I'm going to solder on the wires. I get a little warm and then I usually stick it in my flux just to get it going. What you want to do is put solder on the wires, solder on the tabs, and then touch it afterwards. Solder has flux in it, but you're better off having some flux on the side as well. Like I have the jar. And you put a little bit on here, see? Take no problem at all with these wires. There you go, look at that. Isn't that lovely? You do this one, and then you do the two tabs inside the drill. There we go, solder on the wires. Just gotta prop that up. Two tabs inside. You can see them on either side here, one here and one there. If I glid it a bit, you can see them. There you go. So yeah, it's a little awkward to solder in there. So I did use a uh, kind of doctor's pliers I had and I took them like this here and then put them in and solder them to make it a little easier. But you know, you'll find your way around that. You can also open up the drill to solder them on and put it back together. There you go. Now we're just going to um, get this uh, soldering unit out of the way in these. Right, and we're going to thread basically our uh, units together. So the first thing to go on is this. The first thing to go on is the cap. Let's pull back a bit, there we go. First thing to go on is the cap, which runs up. Right, goes right in here, and there you go, Oop, right the way around, see and that's going to go in there like that, and now we just got to drill a hole in this, and you bring it up and you tie a knot so it can't pull, and it's done, here we go. Drill a hole in the bottom of the cap here, there you go, put the wire through, yeah put a knot here. Right, and now I'm gonna feed on the bottom cap. There we go, like that. And you got your wire coming out the bottom here. So all we gotta do is screw this cap back on now. This one here, pull it up, there we go. Just gotta screw that back onto there. Two screws up in here, two screws down there. Now these ones, when you pull the wire, isn't gonna pull it out. Yeah, just putting in the last screw here. There you go. That pops up in here now when you, oh, I gotta turn it the right way around. And there we have it. You can also put a little bit of epoxy. What happens is that knot's stopping it from being pulled, right? There you go, the wire's too long, but... Put it up to a 12-volt uh, charger, and it's at 12-volt, uh, 6 amps. The wire is a bit long, right? But if you go to 2 amp, 12-volt, 2 amp, there's no power in it. It is to do with your amperage. You have to get your amperage up. Right? So you have some power in this thing. That's at 22 resistance. It's nearly full, right? See, that's what you want. So it's running. The wire is a little long, so. There we go. So make sure you're always on a uh, power bar that has a breaker point. And if you get the um, plus and minus the wrong way around, the drill won't turn, right? So you just gotta change the polarity. You're wondering why it's not working? You've got the plus and minus on the wrong sides. 
as you can see, I've done that here for you. I put this as the plus wire, I put a negative on it and the plus on the negative. Now let's switch them around. You can't leave it that way because the drill will never work. And you know, when you're doing other things, you have to watch you don't burn out diodes. So, so let's plug her in again. Right, we plugged in again and there you go. That's how it worked with a longer cable. Not bad. You get a little bit more amps, you'll get a little bit more power out of it. On this drill, they're really short. The cable's coming down. And you'll see it's got a bit more power to it. So if you have 12 volt and you have two and a half amps, it's not going to go anywhere. Your drill's going to have no power at all. So you have to understand, you have to have 12 volt, but don't go like over, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the amperage is because it doesn't say on the drills, but I'd be very careful not to go over uh, six, seven, eight amps. See, there's nothing mentioned on this at all. So, you want to be uh, around, um, with your wires around 15 feet. I got 17 feet on that, that's what I just showed you. And look at how far away from my bench I can go. Right past up to the camera. And the charger's on the bench. So I can drill here and it'll be fine. And that's quite a distance. But I would say you should go um, 12 to 15 feet is max on your charger. Just so you don't draw too much amperage. Create too much heat. Yes, yeah, so when doing your own drill from uh, DC to AC, which is AC uh, with the converter to DC again, uh, make sure on your um, you know transformer converter that you have a plug for your drill that has two different prongs so that the plus and minus can't get mixed up. Now on some equipment, if you plug in the wrong way around, the diodes will burn out. So you can use a multimeter to check whether you've got the plus side or the minus side. You put your multimeter to DC and you touch the wires. And if it's a minus, then you have them the wrong way around and you switch them. And then you know which wire is plus quite easily.